A masterful win in Monterey puts us 90 minutes away from our first appearance in this save in the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Still have a match in the league to play before we host Monterey at home. As long as we don't wobble, everything should be great. And welcome back, everyone, to episode number 59 of the American Dream. I'm Mr. Cellophane. If you've enjoyed the series so far, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all of your support so far. So we're beating Monterey 2-1 on aggregate. We have to play well at home. If we beat Monterey, they will not be the first Mexican team to be knocked out of the competition. The Chicago Fire on fire, taking care of Club America just as an example, all we need to do is continue our winning ways in the league to guarantee ourselves a berth in the next round of the competition. That, though, was easier said than done as we played host to Grecia, a bottom half team, and Tusha and Getz hooked up in the 11th minute to put us ahead 1-0. But that's when the wheels would come off. A pair of terrible clearances, one by Luis Alfaro, and the other off of a corner kick play would lead to a Reyes goal, although Bacar made a good defensive play and put it right in his feet. And all of a sudden, Gracie was up 2-1. Now off of the corner, Getz and Innocente would connect to even things up. But Grezia had other ideas. 74th minute, beautiful ball forward as we were pressing for another goal. Conte a little slow off of his line. Rojas able to put it past him to make it 3-2. And then Reyes carrying the ball up once again. will feed Salas this time. Beats Conte top corner one on one. And 4-2 your final as we suffer our very first defeat in the Primera División closing stage. Problem is, we are also winless in our last three. 10, 3, and 1. 33 points after 14 matches. Just eight left to go on the schedule. But Cartagena has been able to narrow the eight-point lead we once had. It is down to just one point. But they are a worry for another day. Monterey is our task. A win or a draw, and we move forward into the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. The team we're going to do it with is going to look pretty familiar. Conte and goal, a back four of Bacar, Innocenti, Barantes, and Valverde, with Aquista and Castro in the midfield. Marrera at the 10, Tusha, Lopez, and Getz on the attack. We played well on the road in Mexico, experienced disappointment at home in the league. Hopefully we can just brush that aside and take care of business today against Monterey. They have not won in their last four matches. We're pretty similar in the league, but we were able to knock them off at their place. Can we do it again at ours? Now, if we win this match, we're going to have the quarterfinal draw, and we will bring the first leg of the CONCACAF Champions Cup quarterfinals as our second live com in this episode. If we don't, just preparing for the future, we're going to play out the rest of the closing stage so we can bring you the playoff action tomorrow. We are hoping for the former scenario. And so far, it has been all Monterey. Sanchez in control up the left wing. Lopez. Valverde overcommitted. So Lopez, plenty of space up that left wing. Into the middle. Save made on a gusto by Conte. Bit of a heart attack moment there. And it ain't over yet. Corner attempt cleared away, but Lopez will track it down, carry it back up toward the byline, sends it in. Valverde will head it away. Gets though, cannot get there before Palacio. Nice defensive play, though, by Willem Gets as he carries it up the near sideline. Gets overtaken by his man, but the label he's able to play it to Marrera. Palacio knocking it away. Castro switches it over to Tusha, puts it down, moves it into the middle. Tusha with a drive, and it's too strong. Musa is back deep. He will retrieve it for Monterey. Play it up quickly. The right wing. Diaz into the middle. Barantes clears it and gets in control. Counterattack is on for Saprisa. Running into traffic. Sanchez doing a great job cutting him off. Played free to Castro. Aquista up the middle. Lopez back for Marrera. He's got a lane. Can he take it? No, it's knocked away, but it comes to Getz and Getz finds Pater. His ninth goal of the year. It's a Prisa 1, Monterey nil, 3-1 on aggregate. I got to admit, I wasn't sure if I was going to play Getz or Sekaria on the right wing in this match. I am loving the choice I made right now. So we get the second half underway. 
So Priest leading 1-0 and looking for more. Although dispossessed and taken away, Monterey is going to go the other direction. Lopez flipping it up. Musa having it back for Krejci, looking to reset things. Up the right wing to Diaz. Across the middle finds Aceves. Sanchez quick pass to Agosto. Clatters it off of the frame of the goal. Bakar able to clear it. Marrera helps it along. Willem gets moving it forward. We've only played three minutes in this second half. Gets still in possession before laying it off for Tusha. Gets needs to get back on that right side. Castro ahead. Marrera with a drive off of the crossbar. And Monterey will control. Saprisa so getting outshot 13 to 5. Only the single shot on target, but man, did Dillam Getz make that count. 3 1 on aggregate. Saprisa so leads, but there's still 30 minutes of football remaining to be played. Sanchez up to Lopez. Diaz has it. Gets past one man, carries it into the box, plays it forward. A ghost though through the legs of Conte, but VAR is going to get involved. Was a ghost though on side? The review is complete, and the answer is no, he was not. So the score remains 1-0 to Saprisa. Some tired legs on the back line, but not a lot we can do. Edward Lopez, though, is going to come out, and he will be subbed for Esteban Cordero, who, by the way, quietly, as our number two striker, sometimes number three, has scored 17 goals on this season. We're getting outshot. We are getting outplayed, although the possession numbers are pretty even right now. But where it counts on the scoreboard, we have a 1-0 lead on the night. 3-1 on this tie. Monterey, though, looking to get one back off of the corner. Unable to clear it. It's played cool off of the post, but it comes right to Arrestio Diego, who will score his fourth goal to tie things up at 1. Hoping to shut up shop for the final five minutes. We are slowing it down and hopefully the tactic is going to work it will the full-time whistle is blown we drew on the night 1-1 but we maintained a one goal aggregate lead beating Monterey 3-2 we're going in the hat for the quarterfinals I don't want to say that we are lucky we are because I don't want to diminish everything we've done to build up to this moment but we did not play our best and we are going to get the opportunity at revenge in the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Because we are taking on the team that eliminated us from the Central American Cup. It's Olympia from Honduras. And once again, we will have the advantage of being home in the second leg. Three more in the league before we return to continental play. And I'm hoping to right the ship, but sadly our wish was not going to come true on the road at Punta Reynas as Jean-Baptiste Taking the ball over the top, gets beyond the defense to put Punta Reynas up 1-0. And then Ali stealing it in our end, playing it into the middle. Charging in as Cordero pops it past Conte. 2-0, your final score. We did manage nine shots on goal, which isn't a lot for us. Five on target, which honestly, percentage-wise, kind of is. We were ultimately just outplayed things did not go our way to say that we were unlucky maybe a little kind but we need to be a lot better and at home against sporting we didn't look a lot better in the early going less than the minute in marvin alfaro remember him he used to be here he popped a header over conte to make it one nil in the early going but Willem gets getting things started. Castro taking it in, shooting from just inside the box to tie things up at one, just under five minutes into the match. 20th minute, we would take the 2-0 lead. What a turn by Vitan Tusha, popping it past the goalkeeper. 2-1, Saprisa. 12 minutes later, we would make it three as Tusha finds Sekaria charging into the box. 3-1. One, and we seem to be on an absolute roll, especially when we made it four. Barantes with the header off of the corner from Braun. 4-1, and we just assumed it was going to be all wine roses and lollipops. But Vargas had another idea. One minute into the second half, bringing Sporting back within 4-2. They would make it 4-3 off of the foot of Vargas, putting it past Conte. And all of a sudden, we are starting to panic. And it showed in our play on the pitch. Castillo carrying it up the left wing, sending it into the middle. Rojas 
getting up over the defender to tie things up at four. Terrible penalty led to Vargas potting home his second of the match from the spot. We put all out pressure on. Vitan Tusha took the team on his back. Brought us back even at five. We could not poke another one through. Alejandro Braun, by the way, missing a penalty in the ninth minute could have been a massive difference in this game. We would have headed into halftime up 5-1. Sadly, it wasn't to be, and our woes, well, they roll on. What we needed was a much better performance against ninth place Alejandro on the road, and we got it. First minute of stoppage time in the first half. Steven Akista in the box. His fifth goal of the year to put Saprisa up 1-0. We would add another Braun to Barantes for the second straight game. 2-0. Fifth minute of stoppage time in the second half. Alajuanense would get one back. Perez, his shot deflecting off of Innocente and past Conte. But that would be all they would get, scoring on just their second shot on target of the match. They actually outshot us, and even though they only had two shots on target, had a full goal XG difference on us. But ultimately, it didn't matter. We returned to our winning ways just in time. 2-1, your final. And even though just a couple of episodes ago, right before the grand final of the opening stage, we were threatened with our job, the board has seen fit to keep us around for a little while longer, offering us $8,750 a week, which is frankly what we're making right now, on a new two-year contract, which we're going to accept. But not after getting another 250 bucks a week out of them. Sadly, one piece of bad news before we head into the away leg of the quarterfinal of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. 19-year-old utility man Jorge Valverde. Well, he's going to be out for three to five weeks. Suffered some broken ribs in our win against Alajuelense, which would be a massive problem for us. But Hugo Cordero is back. And he is going to get the start as our right back in front of Mohamed Kante. But Carr is going to be on the left, Innocente and Barantes in the middle. Castro will pair with Alejandro Bran in the midfield. It's going to be William Ramirez at the 10. Tusha and Getz on the wings. And today's striker will be Esteban Cordero. Hoping to seek revenge against the team that, as I mentioned earlier, knocked us out of the CONCACAF Central American Cup. They beat us by just one goal on the road. We just could not beat them at home. We ended up drawing 1-1, losing by one on aggregate. I think this could be, I don't want to say the easiest path, but the most likely path to see us make the semifinals of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We've got to win on the road at Olympia first. We are at the Estadio Tiburcio Carrillas Andido in Tegucigalpa. Tegucigalpa? Tegucigalpa? I don't know. And we've got the ball early on. Tusha playing it forward. Esteban Cordero will lay it back. But Carr, he has been very, very good. Yes, he was credited with a known goal in one of the league matches. You know, he was trying to get the ball off the line. He didn't succeed. But he's generally pretty good with the ball, very responsible, and a high-quality passer. He gets it up for Tusha, gets quickly to Cordero. He's in. He'll fire and score, but the flag is up, and it won't count. But that's okay. An early opportunity. Two shots to one in favor of the home team. As long as we keep the pressure on, we should be good. Just like with any of these other ties, as long as we keep it close, either tied, up one, down one, we stand a great chance at home. Flip forward, gets into the middle. Can't make it through to Cordero. It's cleared away. Rivera looking to start the counterattack. We'll lay it to his left to Alvarado, who did have to come back and get that one. So he'll play it to his center back, Rapolo first. Alvarado with it once again into the interior of the pitch. Ahead, Ramirez moves past one man. Can't get past another, so we will drop it once again for Rapolo. Alvarado. Up the left wing, Rivera in a little bit of space, which he runs out of as Hugo Cordero gets back. But the return feed to Rivera sent into the middle to Samuel Martinez, his ninth of the year. And Olympia scores one that counts. I don't know. I just felt like the longer that highlight went on, the greater the chance it was going to end in a goal for the opposition. We do immediately, though, come back and put some pressure on. We've now taken eight shots to their three. Only three of them have hit the target. Make that nine. And if you look at the XG on the screen, you'll see that we have taken over. 
So even though we couldn't put one past the goalkeeper Castillo in that half, except for when we were offsides, of course, we do seem to be setting ourselves up nicely for the final 45 of this match. At the very least, holding Olympia to as few opportunities as possible. Here's our chance to get one back off of the throwing Cordero. He's got William Ramirez. He'll drop it back for Barantes. Castro, Barantes once again along the midfield stripe. Alejandro Brand for Innocenti. Looking to move it forward. Castro up the left wing. Tusha, can he push it past the defense? No. He'll drop it to Castro out wide. Bacard into the box. tusha has got it around the edge. He'll shoot and just miss it wide. But we continue to ask probing questions. Cordero Ramirez, Castro, how did he miss it? He was wide open. Thank goodness for him and his pride. He was ultimately offside. Bran with the corner, picks out Barantes, and he cannot tuck it under the bar like he did in each of the last two matches leading up to this one. Can we do it here? Bran gets with room, shoots, clatters it off of the crossbar and out. And with 15 minutes left in the match, we are going to make some changes. Cordero is going to come on out. Vitantusha is going to take over up top. Uh, Sebastian... or. Leonardo Arias. So we have some players that were a little knackered coming back from international duty that are not available for this match. Secaria is one of them. Edward Lopez still out playing for his country. Uh, we're also going to get Alejandro Brand out and he will be replaced by Jesus Ceballos. Not having Valverde available is an issue with selections off of the bench in this match. We should be back to full strength for the home leg. Just five minutes remaining in this match. The second half has essentially been all Saprisa. So we're going to look to go on the attack for the final couple of minutes. Three added on at the end. And we are not going to see any further activity. So we head home down 1-0 on the tie. But a promising look at what could be available in the future. As in that second half it was all Saprisa. We just couldn't take advantage of any of our opportunities. At least we did come tantalizingly close. We've got the home leg coming up in tomorrow's episode of Match Against Liberia in the league before that. After that, there will only be four matches remaining in the closing stage. As you see, we are in second place. Even with Cartagines on points and goal difference, after goal difference, the next tiebreaker is goals four. And sadly for us right now, the edge goes to Cartagines. So we have a lot of work to do. A new contract, another trophy or two that we're chasing, and an opportunity to make it into the semifinals of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. We have gotten further than we ever have. We are pressing on in tomorrow's episode. I hope to see you then. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you are new or if you just haven't done it already. Thank you, everyone, for all your support. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.